Um, hi everyone, uh, welcome to our postgraduate virtual event. Thank you very much for signing up and joining us. Um, we will start with uh, introduction and um, we'll introduce myself and the panel of current students that I'm with. Uh, so my name is Monica Nilsson and I am a former Newcastle University student. I studied um, MSc in International Marketing at the University and I am joined by our two current postgraduate students. Uh, we have Bhargav here. Hello, I'm Bhargav. Um, I'm from India and I'm doing my Masters in International Marketing as well. And we have Naveen. Hi guys, my name is Naveen and I'm initially from India as well. I'm currently studying MSc in International Management. Great, thank you very much. Um, so that was the short introduction and now uh, we will move on to presentation about uh, postgraduate courses at our university and um, just a short introduction to the university. The presentation will take about 15 minutes and after the presentation we will move on to live question and answer session where you will be able to ask us any questions that you have about studying here uh, using the uh, YouTube live um, chat function which will be to the right from the video. So feel free to ask us question, questions after the presentation. And now we will move on to the presentation. Uh, so this is me, but you've already seen my face. <laughs> uh, so the session will cover um, information about our postgraduate degrees and later, as I mentioned, panel discussion. Um, so here at Newcastle University London, um, we um, ignite connections. We ignite connections between uh, our staff members and our students, between our students and the industry. Um, and um, we um, fame ourselves on our academic excellence and the location in which we're, we are in, which is the heart of London, Zone 1, Central London. Um, and we are a founding member of Russell Group. I'm not sure if you're uh, aware of what Russell Group e is, but these are the 24 most research intensive universities in the United Kingdom, a uh, part of which is also University of Cambridge and Oxford. So um, it's a great group to be a member of. Um, and um, next, inspiration meets industry. So here we offer university uh, in industry immersive education, and we offer things like master classes, work placements, real life projects, and uh, even more to help you develop the skills that you need to go into the world of work. Uh, I will talk a little bit more about it later. And uh, we have a really small campus in a big city here in London. And so our campus only holds six courses, three undergraduate courses and three postgraduate courses. Um, but we are in a very big city, which is London. And as I mentioned, we're in zone one, so it's especially busy here. Uh, so let's talk more about academic excellence. Um, so our university origins back to 1834, and we're a global top 150 university, according to QS World University ranking released um, just this year. And as I mentioned, we are a founding member of the prestigious Russell Group and 16th in the UK for research power. We're also top 20 most targeted university by the UK's leading employers for the last five years and, and we have also won in 2017 something called TEF Gold Award which is Teaching Excellent, Excellence Framework Award given by the government which means we have great standard in teaching and research. Um, so these are our postgraduate degrees. Mm -hmm. We have Banking and Finance, International Business Management and International Marketing and today with me I have um, a representative from International Business Management, Naveen, and from International Marketing, Bargav. And you can find all the module details online um, when you go on our website. And the entry requirements are typically 2-1 in a UK undergraduate degree or international equivalent, which you can also find on our website in international pages section. And also for international students, we require you to have IELTS 6.5 or equivalent. Um, and also, there are other English tests that you can take, not only IELTS, which you will find on our website. This is the location that I was talking about. As you see, we are only 15 minute walk from River Thames that flows through London. And uh, we are on the verge of two very exciting districts. Uh, so one area is the city of London, 
which is where all the big businesses and big banks are, um, and uh, we can ignite the connections with these businesses on our campus, benefiting from the location. And um, another district which we are on the verge of is called Shoreditch, and this is one of the most hip areas of London, where all the artists are, uh, all the great food places, um, markets, um, art galleries, um, and places to go out to. Uh, so we really benefit from being between these two great areas of London. Uh, here you can see the city of London. For example, on your right hand side is the iconic Gherkin building, which you can see um, from some places uh, on our campus and it's only five minutes away. And you see the city of London at night, uh, all the buildings lit up and you can have a walk around here. It's all just on the doorstep of our campus. And here Shoreditch, very different vibe, but also just in the vicinity from our campus and um, all the cool graffiti around, pop-up stores, great food, so the best that London has to offer. Now let's move on to inspiration meets industry. Um, so as I've mentioned, we offer an industry immersive education working hand in hand with industry to enable you to build the skills that top employers demand. And here we have examples of some of the activities we provide to our students to enhance their employability. So we have something called master classes, which you will hear more about from our students, but this is basically a lecture series that we offer exclusively to our students. It's happening every single week, every Wednesday on campus, where we invite industry experts to, uh, from different industries to talk to our students about their, um, how they made it in the world of business and how they achieved um, uh, where they are now and what advice they can give to our students. And also afterwards, you can network with them and create great connections. Uh, we also hold alumni events. Um, we benefit from a very big alumni network here in London uh, of Newcastle University. And each year we ho hold alumni events uh, to which we invite our current students, which is also a great networking opportunity. Um, on our courses, students are also engaged in practical real life projects. Uh, which um, our students will tell you about later. We also have someone called uh, Entrepreneur in Residence. Um, it's Chris Sharp, it's his name, and uh, he is here to ensure that anybody wanting to create a business um, has all the support needed to do so. We really encourage our students to get entrepreneurial um, and also offer support from Newcastle's Career self Service. Um, you have Startup there, uh, which helps you to create your own business should you wish to. We also have internships um, that we offer through our careers service website um, and we have career service itself, which you can use um, online and also they offer support on campus. And here you have um, logos of some of the companies that have visited our campus and that we engage with. So as you see, some really big names, uh, Lidl, it's, you know, really big supermarket. Um, then we have Accenture and PwCU the biggest consultancies that have come to our campus and for example PwC gave our students skill session and um, taught us how to apply for positions with them. Um, so a little bit more about career service. Um, Newcastle University Career Services multi-award winning career service um, and we have online database of vacancies with over 3,000 employers advertising there. Um, and this is exclusively available to our students, so you can find really good work opportunities there. Um, the service also offers advice, CV writing, interview preparation, and assessment day preparation for our students who are applying for, uh, for vacancies. So we are trying to offer you as much support as possible to prepare you for the world of work. Uh, here we have a quote from one of our students, one of our former students, Galska who studied international business management and uh, later went on to a role as a strategic manager in food and beverage. So she says, my current position is very focused on strategy and analysis of the macro world and its workings. The topics covered in MSC International Business Course gave me a strong foundation which has helped immensely in the workplace. The many tools and frameworks which I learned during the course meant I could hit the ground running when I started my position. 
Now let's move on uh, to the last section, a small campus meets a big city. Uh, so here we have personal education with an intimate, supportive learning community. Um, so this is a big uh, point of studying at our campus is the size of classes. Uh, basically at a traditional business school, you have around 300 or 400 students studying with you at undergraduate degrees and around 100 or 150 at postgraduate degrees. However, here uh, we, um, we have only around 30 or 40 students in a classroom, which guarantees a very different learning environment. And especially for postgraduate students, um, this allows you to really, um, really get the opportunities um, that maybe you wouldn't get at a bigger campus and get to meet your fellow students, get to meet the academics better and create this personal close-knit relationships um, that the small class sizes guarantees. Here we have another quote from uh, our current student, Anka. What made Newcastle University known and unique for me is that it's exceptionally personal. The warm-hearted stuff, the proximity between teachers and students, and the considerate and appreciative interaction with each other were crucial factors for my decision. Great, now let's move on to um, tell you a little bit about the postgraduate degrees that we offer. We will start with banking and finance postgraduate degree. Um, and it will develop your skills and practical understanding of the role of banks in a modern economy, the oper operational behavior of banks, financial markets and investors, and contemporary debates international financial markets. And you will also uh, be able to take part in master classes, which I described earlier, uh, which are um, delivered by industry professionals. And the course covers the following areas. Applied econometrics, central bank banking, financial derivatives, financial theory, uh, econometrics, finance and risk modeling, uh, retail and investment banking. You can find more information about the modules, uh, who is teaching them, reading list and uh, a lot of um, information on our website. And this course is ideal if you are interested in a career in central investment or retail banking, as well as broader finance positions. And more specific roles into which you can go after this course include accountancy, relationship and fund management, auditing, asset pricing and risk management. And fees and funding for that course. so. For 2018-19, uh, for UK students and EU students is £7,800 and for international students it's £19,200. And um, here important to note that EU students starting at Newcastle in 2018 and 2019 will pay the UK home tuition fee, which has been confirmed by the government recently. We also have a range of academic scholarships available. And now we have two scholarships available uh, with discounts for postgraduate courses and more information you can find online. And entry requirements for this course is 2-1 honours degree or international equivalent. And for this particular course, you also need to show a firm grasp of basic calculus, probability theory and statistical inference. So that means basically you have to show to our selectors that um, you have had um, you have studied maybe uh, some maths um, in your uh, undergraduate degree or you have done something to prepare you for studying at this degree which does have you know some mathematics and financial theory in it and now let's move on to our second course which is international business management so this course gives you a rich introduction to the complexity of globalization and cultural difference you will cover core management areas including strategy, marketing, managing organizations, and managing people. And this course is ideal for you if you want to study a broad business-based degree with an international focus. You will be able to develop your career, career in areas such as management consultancy, marketing, and human resource management. And the fees for this course uh, for UK and EU students are £7,800 and for international full-time students it's £18,000. Um, and here again it's 2.1 honours degree or international equivalent 
in any subject. This is important to know. So no matter what was your first degree, your undergraduate bachelor degree, um, you can still go on to do this postgraduate course. And here we don't require any uh, prior knowledge of maths, calculus or probability theory because this course doesn't have so much mathematical financial focus. And our third and last degree is International Marketing MSc. And this is the degree that I have studied in Newcastle myself. Uh, it is aimed at graduates of all disciplines who wish to study a commercially focused postgraduate course. So again, all disciplines. So no matter what your bachelor degree is, you can actually go on and study this um, international marketing degree. And by studying this degree, you'll develop a range of skills and knowledge, including how to apply marketing theory to international case studies, markets and issues, advanced skills in the analysis of markets in an international context, and knowledge of ethical issues and their implications in marketing. And uh, these are some of the areas that the course covers, consumer behavior, international brand management, international business environment, international marketing, market analysis, market research, and principles of marketing. And Newcastle graduates are currently employed in companies around the world, including Laurel, Accenture, Microsoft, Sainsbury, Nestle, so all the big companies. <coughs> Course accreditation, um, it is accredited by the Chartered Institute of Marketing, one of the world's leading international bodies for marketing and business development. And successful graduates of this um, degree can undertake further study for a CIM qualification at the highest possible entry level, namely the Chartered Postgraduate Diploma in Marketing. Um, and our course is also only one of six in the UK to achieve Market Research Society accreditation, which offers a route to certify member status of uh, MRS without any further exam subject to work experience. And fees and funding for this course uh, so again, £7,800 for UK and EU students entering 2018 and 19, and um, for international students it's £18,000. Entry requirements, um, same as for uh, IBM course, it's 2.1 honours degree or international equivalent in any subject, and IELTS 6.5. And this is it uh, from our introductory presentation. And now we will move on to a question and answer panel with our students. Um, hello again. Um, I hope you enjoyed the presentation and found it informative. And if you have any questions pertaining to anything in the presentation or anything else, please answer them live and we will answer them, um, our students and myself. And you can do this by submitting them um, on the right hand side of um, of the video you will find a question and answer panel in youtube live um, so now um, while we wait for questions from you uh, we will answer some questions that are frequently asked uh, by applicants and prospective students um, but please feel free to answer uh, to ask us questions and we'll do our best to answer them live um, so first, maybe let's start talking about study and support um, at our university. And I have first question to our student Navi. Um, how does studying a postgraduate degree differ from undergraduate degree, Navi? Um, I think it's a huge step from going from undergraduate to postgraduate. Uh, it requires more hard work, um, more organization. Um, I think from undergraduate, you le you learn a lot from what you have done um, that you could do differently to postgraduate. Um, but certainly there's a lot of um, fun involved, uh, especially for international business management, as much as uh, this requires a lot of hard work, there's practical work as well that you take uh, um, a lot of skills from. And yeah, I think that's one of the things. So it requires more efficiency, more hard work, more organization and more skills as well. Um, I agree. I think it's, um, it's quite a step up uh, to postgraduate degree, you really have to be organized um, because you won't have as many contact hours as at undergraduate degree, but you are required to study all the same just at home, your own self-directed study. So, you know, you have to be quite organized um, and prepared to do a lot of work at home. 
Uh, the next question is, what's different about studying in England as compared to other countries? And that I will ask to Bhargav because I know that he studied <laughs> his first degree in India. Well, um, it's quite different culturally as mm-hmm. well because you get a lot of experience uh, from different cultures when you meet different people, especially your own classmates. And uh, the other thing is you get to learn a lot of um, things uh, and develop your skills as well. So it's a brilliant experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would add that that um, I studied in Poland. I'm I'm from Poland, so um, I studied my undergraduate degree in English in Poland, and then I moved on to international marketing postgraduate degree in England. So quite a big change, really, uh, both of degree and country. And I would say that degrees in England are much more practical, and um, so you do have a lot of group work. Um, a lot of practical projects uh, that you work on that we'll talk about uh, more later and you're more exposed to the real world of business and that I found one of the biggest differences and also something that really prepares you very well for the real world of work. Um, And we have another question, do I need to have studied the subject before or are there conversion options? So I have mentioned that already in the presentation um, and I would like to reaffirm that you don't have to study the subject at an undergraduate level. Uh, For example, as I just said, I studied English and then um, at undergraduate level, and then I went on to study marketing at postgraduate level. And I know that um, both of our students did do business related courses at undergraduate level and postgraduate level, but this is not the case for many people. Uh, For international marketing and international business management, we accept applicants with any degree discipline in their first um, course. So no matter what you've studied, you can still convert, so to say, and study something else at postgraduate level. Yeah, can I just add to that? Mm -hmm. A couple of my colleagues from my international business management class actually initially did uh, psychology in the undergraduate degree, but then went on to uh, to, uh, go on to study international business management. So, you know, it's not all about the foundation, but you can start Mm -hmm. again. Postgraduate. Exactly. Um, and we have another question. Do you have student support services on campus? Um, Bargav, I know that you've used some uh, service. Uh, sorry, Naveen. <laughs> I know that you've used some uh, services, so maybe you can um, answer that question. Yes, surely. Uh, so before I started applying for my jobs, I used the CV career service here, which um, I got my CV checked, as well as my uh, cover letter as well, to make sure it's up to the mark to high standard that the employers are looking for looking for and uh, so that's one of the biggest advantage of Newcastle University they help you uh, through the industry engagement as well as career service to make sure that you stand out to the employers mm-hmm. and we have also other support services available like finance uh, welfare and well-being so if you have you know any personal difficulties any financial difficulties we have a team available on ha- campus to also help you with these things and we have a question from live audience, very exciting. Mm. Uh, um, Marina has asked about accommodation. Um, so she's already uh, holding offer from our university and is wondering how to get about getting accommodation and what options are available. Um, so I will start maybe by saying a little bit about our university accommodation. So we actually do have three accommodation sites um, that we work with. And the furthest one really is a 15 minute underground right away so it's still very very close the closest one we can basically touch from our windows Mm -hmm. (laughs) so um we have yes uh three three options for our students and if you choose um one of our university accommodation sites you'll be guaranteed to be living with other same gender students from our university so you will get even more integrated in the student community. Um, and more about these three options you can read online if you go to our website and then just click on the left um, hand side panel on accommodation. Uh, however, there are different options as well. I know that um, Naveen, for example, lives at home. Yeah. Um, so some students um, you know, who live quite close to London can choose to do that. Yeah. And Bargav, can you tell us uh, where do you live and how did you find it? Um, well, I did my research before coming here and I found out uh, there is a hostel um, named YMCA, um, so I live there 
with my friends and it's um, it was quite easy to get uh, the accommodation uh, but it you have to book uh, prior to uh, four months uh, mm -hmm. before getting a hold of a reservation but uh, I think my stay has been very very um, memorable and it is really nice yeah and there are also options to rent out completely private accommodation share a house with people and their websites such as spareroom.com that catered that and a lot of people do that and then the turnaround time can be say one week from when you come to london and find an accommodation because in london things are happening very quickly <laughs> um, and uh, we have another question from our live live audience uh, about how many times a week there are classes and um, can you get a um, part-time job is there enough time to get a part-time job um, Barkov, I know you have a part-time job so yes. maybe you can uh, clarify that yeah well um, we have just three days uh, in a week uh, that we have to uh, come uh, sit and attend classes uh, but it completely depends on which course you're studying for example uh, Naveen um, has three different days separate to my days as I'm studying marketing so it depends on which um, course you're studying in, firstly. And secondly, um, it's easy to get a part-time job. That's something that I would say. Um, at the same time, uh, there there's a different process of getting it. Um, we need to procure a government, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, NIN. Um, national, which insurance national insurance number, uh, number <laughs> which is really important and uh, once we get that and then it's easy to apply for a part-time job mm -hmm. and yeah so what uh, Bargav is talking about is basically just a standard process whenever anybody wants to get a job in this country whether you're English or from any other country mm -hmm. uh, you just need to fill out some papers and get something called national insurance number uh, which guarantees uh, that you have a tax code so um, you know everything is done correctly and you can um, pay taxes and it's all official but it's just an official process that absolutely everybody can can get it just takes about a month um, before you get this number and uh, yeah I would say there's uh, maybe around in total 15 contact hours on average yeah. so 15 hours that you have to be on campus every week yeah. to attend lectures yeah. mm -hmm. Um, and so that does give you actually a lot of free time but as I mentioned there's also a lot of reading and studying to be done at home and um, however the guideline that we really give um, is to that yes you you do have enough time for part-time work but it shouldn't really be more than 15 hours a week of part-time work to guarantee that you have enough time to do your studies which is basically two days of work uh, you know which is what part-time job should be really and yeah. um, I did um, two internships when I was studying so I was working part-time myself and that um, that meant that I could you know get some extra money get experience which is really important and also um, have enough time for my studies and um, so yes is the answer um, and another question that we have is what are the class sizes Naveen maybe you can yeah. um, answer that uh, international business management is one of the uh, most famous courses amongst mm -hmm. the class university uh, uh, we have around 40 students I think that's the most we uh, we have amongst the postgraduate uh, international marketing mm -hmm. um, for international marketing is around 30 and um, I think it's a close-knit uh, yeah. group and it's 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 really good very diverse mm -hmm. group as well so people yeah. from different cultures all around the world so it's a very diverse group for yeah. the students yeah so for the students it's really not many compared to um, other business schools um, and it really allows for this classroom environment and getting to know everyone yeah. um, can I just add to that sorry we mm -hmm. have our own uh, group chat on whatsapp all 40 students <laughs> so talking about uh, discussing the modules and so on so having a small number of amount of students is, is still a good advantage so you can all uh, uh, interact with each other and help each sure. other out so mm -hmm. it's one of the biggest advantage um, and um, we have a question about the assessment methods. So how is the course assessed? Barbara, maybe you can start answering that. Um, we have uh, presentations and uh, exams. So that's 
that's all I could I can say but uh, I think it's really important that uh, we get to do um, practical uh, things like presentations which helps us in improving our uh, speaking ability and uh, improves our um, skill uh, to present um, things and it and exams are uh, another part of it and I believe that it's it might be quite challenging but with enough time uh, of preparation I think we are good to give an exam and mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Uh, for international business management for the first semester we had exams and assignments and presentations as well so it's a mixture for the first part of the uh, course and the second half is just the uh, presentations and assignments only and obviously when uh, the course finishes um, in summer then you have the dissertation to do overall which is due in around September time mm-hmm. so it's a mm-hmm. mixture of everything really. Uh, which actually brings me nicely to the next question which is um, how long is the course does it last a full year yeah. because um, I know that some students get confused about it I was a bit confused myself mm-hmm. because you know we say that the course lasts full year full but year. then uh, the classes only last until so around May yeah. around Mid-May, May yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so you finish classes in May but somehow the course lasts until September mm-hmm. and basically that means that throughout the summer holidays you're writing your dissertation yeah. so you're still a full-time student yeah. and you still have to work pretty hard <laughs> 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 and you know spend long hours writing your dissertation so you don't have classes but mm-hmm. you're still studying and working so yes the course does last from september to september next year a full year year. Mm -hmm. and we have a question about visas and so it's a question about um are you part of tier 4 visa pilot scheme that includes a six month post studies work permit and so yes we are for some of you uh, who might not know uh what it is um, I will explain briefly that um, government introduced this new scheme to help international students stay for a bit longer after their course finish in the UK to help them get work experience um, and um, you know maybe then go on to full employment in this country. And only some universities are part of this scheme and we are lucky to be one of these universities. So basically all international students that are studying with us um, are able to stay after their course finishes for six months six months in the uk right so after your course finishes in september you can stay for six more months in the uk uh, do some work travel around whatever it is that you wish to do and more information about it can be found on our website so please have a look at it um and the next question is are, are the courses practical as well as theory based and we have some really good examples here from our students so i'll ask naveen to answer yeah. that question yeah, it's both practical as theory based. You apply the theory in practice as well. Uh, so the managing uh, organization is one of the course uh, module we do where we have our own startup. Uh, we go to the Spitzfield market, which is five minute walk from here, uh, set up our own store and sell whatever uh, we plan to sell. So we sold uh, wobble cushions for the uh, customers over there and all the money goes to the charity. So it's, it's a good process where you um, uh, present to the owner of Spitalfield and if he agrees that the business is really good he then gives you the money to uh, have the startup and then yeah, throughout the course and throughout the module we gain a lot of skills uh, so talking to customers a good communication skills and good team building skills and also presenting towards the CEO of the Spitalfield market as well so it's it's good theory and practice combining together really well. It's a lot of fun as well, yeah, right? Really. Okay. Yeah, it's a challenge about who is going to get the most profit overall. So as much as it's um, fun, it's always it's mm-hmm. also a bit of uh, uh, sport in there as yeah, well. Competitive. Yeah, competitive. <laughs> I wish we were a part of it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we had several team uh, themes uh, teams. I mean, uh, I think around seven. Yeah, around seven. Uh huh. That took part in the challenge, and each uh, team was assigning something different. Mm. We had wobble cushions. cushions. If you don't know what it is, uh, can you? Explain? Uh, yeah, it's basically uh, for 
uh, people who sit there for long hours, especially around Spitfire markets, it's the banks and the IT companies who mm -hmm. sit on the chairs for so long. So they use wobble cushions, they reduce their backache. So I think 90% mm -hmm. of the UK population had a backache that was off or stuff, so okay. I still remember it. Uh, so yeah, so, so they can use it to, uh, for their own comfort, so they don't feel the back pain while they're yeah. sitting there doing their long hours. So that was one of our products. We, we and managed how did to, you do? Yeah, we managed to sell out actually, yeah. but, but we, we didn't end up getting the most profit. I think the candles got the most profit. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, we initially sold out, which yeah. is a good experience mm -hmm. already. Yeah. yeah, so it's a great experience for yeah. our students. And to uh, be a vendor on a market for for two days yeah. and get um, money from the university to live well basically start your own business we have also other uh project uh projects Bargov, um, um is on different course so we had a different yeah. practical project so in the first semester we had a module on uh, which was principles of marketing and our uh, lecturer had brought in a, a client sort of to speak and um they're into logistics and what we had to do is uh, given the primary data from the company we had to gather data from the markets the competitors and such and such and develop a business model and provide marketing strategies and it was really intensive and I should say competitive as well <laughs> between uh, the groups and I think I enjoyed it pretty much as well. great Good. thank you um, another question that I already explained a bit, but maybe our students can give a little bit more background to is what are master classes? And I know that uh, both Naveen and Bargav have attended some, so maybe I'll ask you to yeah. answer this. So master classes are uh, people, entrepreneurs, CEOs uh, from various businesses around London coming to Newcastle University London to uh, give a speech on various different things. So for example, uh, I'll give you um, the an example of someone who came in earlier so the institute of directors the management consultant of him uh david string lamari he came in uh, to give us a speech on cultures how to adapt to different cultures around the businesses so he does businesses around the world uh what his company does is uh, bring two businesses together from different uh end, ends of the world uh, so it's it's really interesting. Um, you gain a lot of networking opportunities from uh, these uh, master classes. So uh, a few weeks ago, we had the managing director of Goldman Sachs come in as well. Mm -hmm. So I was able to connect with him on LinkedIn, and um, you know, whenever I can, uh, message him asking for any advisors on different opportunities or uh, advisors on how to apply for different jobs. So they are always willing to help. So that's one of the biggest advantages of master classes: these networking opportunities. And some students really know how to use them, like yeah, Naveen. Really. <laughs> yeah. So you just have to, you know, um, be brave and go out there and try to speak to these people yeah. because you can really benefit yeah. uh, from it. Uh, thank you. And um, what about career service and careers advice on campus? I know also that Naveen has used um, some of that, so yeah. maybe you can tell us about it. Yeah, sure. Uh, so talk, going to these masterclasses, uh, getting these motivation, inspiration, to, uh, apply for these big jobs that they're in the position of I uh, think the career service really help you check your CV as I mentioned earlier so uh, I know a couple of the students who've attended master classes got jobs through these networking opportunities as well and uh, you know I think uh, career service help really help because uh, with this master class it's all combination really so uh, going through the career service help getting help your uh, CV and your cover letter and using the networking opportunity from these master classes and the industry engagement officer um, so it's a combination that really helps them that really helps really well mm -hmm. so for those of you who are more focused on employability and getting a job and um, our campus we does offer a lot of opportunities yeah. for that um, um, and we ha also have a question if we offer any opportunities for part-time work um, so I'll answer that and <coughs> yes we do and one of the opportunities is for example being a student ambassador which both of our <laughs> students are um, so this is something we offer to all, all our students yeah. I mean you do have to interview to get the position yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then you help us um, run an events on campus uh, you help us um, coming up with marketing strategies like Vargas did and yeah. um, <laughs> you know to help practice um, yeah. the skills on his course and you help us with some administrative tasks, tasks as well. Um, you get talking to prospective students and advise them. So it's like a variety of different activities that you 
can get involved with and you also get paid for that and it's great on your cv and a good good fun experience i think yeah i just add that uh as well as a student ambassador you can also be a student representative uh, of your course and also we get the volunteering opportunities in your class as well so i volunteer twice with age uk a a old age home you go out there and uh, help these people and so yes as much as there's work experience there's volunteering experience as well in newcastle Mm -hmm. yeah thank you um and now let's move on to applying Uh, so uh, the question is uh, can we tell um, a bit more about application uh, process how do students apply and are there any deadlines for application Uh, so application process for postgraduate studies uh, studies is really quite straightforward and you just have to fill out a form that you find on our website you know with your personal information what course you're applying to and your education so far and then you have to provide us with transcripts of your uh, bachelor degree and the bachelor degree itself Um, you have to provide us with two referees so these are people who will give you references to study here Uh, One should be an academic and another one can be um, your previous or current employer and We can contact them, you know, um, just to tell us if they think you'll be a good um, match for our campus and a good student Um, and also to just send us your CV and for international students and European students uh, we also ask for English language test and one um, of the tests that we accept the most popular one is IELTS and you should have 6.5 in IELTS test. However, if you want to apply and you don't have IELTS, you can still do that and get a conditional offer from us, uh, which means that we accept you on the condition that before you come to study with us, you will complete your IELTS test, right? So I didn't know that actually when I was applying, so I was waiting to get my IELTS results and then apply. So I was a bit stressed about time, mm. but you don't have to wait. You, as long as you already you know, um, have your grades or expecting your grades from your bachelor, um, bachelor degree, you can, you can apply straight away and just get a conditional offer. And good news, there are no deadlines for applications. Um, so for European and home students, you can apply basically, you know, two weeks beco- be- before the course starts. I don't recommend it. <laughs> um, it's, it's better to plan ahead for uh, a number of reasons. Yeah. Uh, but in theory you can and still get accepted um, for international students you have to allow a bit more time in order to have your visa processed um, so here we recommend to apply no later than three months before your course starts um, and also the turnaround time is really quick um, Bart, how long did it take us to get back to you with uh, uh, the results of your application probably a week and a half yeah around a so week as well yeah yeah so so, you know, you'll hear back from us really quickly. Um, yeah, so it's a very easy process, really. And again, you'll find more information on the website and the form to fill out you will also find on the website. Um, and what are the standard requirements uh, for postgraduate degrees? I already um, said, uh, spoke about this in the presentation, but just to reiterate, so it's 2.1 in a UK undergraduate degree or international equivalent. Um, and there's also a question, is a degree from Newcastle University London the same as from Newcastle University? So this is a really good question. And the answer is yes, it is the same degree. So we follow exactly the same syllabus as Newcastle University does. So the course, course structure is exactly the same. We have all the same accreditations. So for example, the business school has triple accreditation from international accrediting bodies, meaning that we are the top one percent of business schools in the world and um, so it's all the same academic excellence and all the same accolades and awards that newcastle university has as we are integral part of newcastle university um, however the practical elements of the course will be different so um, as naveen said for example here we have spittle Field holds market yeah. challenge which they don't have in Newcastle. So, yeah. uh, so we are trying, you know, to benefit from the location of where we are yeah, and give our students, you know, um, opportunities experience. that um, an experience that they can get in only in the city of London, yeah. really. So the practical elements of the courses will be different, but um, the theory will be exactly the same. So, yeah. um, 
And maybe let's talk more about our fantastic location in yeah. Zone 1 Central yeah. London. <laughs> um, so um, I already told you where the campus is based, so yeah. maybe we can talk more about the area. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, maybe Naveen, you can tell us you know, what the area is like and do you go out and do some stuff around the campus? Yeah, sure. Uh, this area is very professional, really. Uh, you know, you get the inspiration of being there uh, to you know, uh, study in business management and uh, coming to this area you kind of get the motivation to be working in one of these big organizations so there's uh, NatWest here and then there's Spitalfield and there's IT companies around so it's really nice and you, there's only five minute walk away from Spitalfield Market where you can uh, go for food during your lunch breaks and uh, the little, the, you're only 15 minutes away from River Thames so when you have a long break uh, two hours between classes you can always go to River Thames to come <laughs> back uh, you know yeah it's it's a really inspiring place inspiring city so mm -hmm. I'm glad um, I'm, we're in zone one really um, I look forward to come to uni every day just for the environment <laughs> <we're here. laughs> um, and well, what about maybe some social activities around the campus Varga? Well, uh, for social activities, I think Shoreditch and Old Street are yeah. one of the best places mm -hmm. around campus. And I think the vibe of the place is really good. A mm. uh, mix of different cultures again. And uh, we get to see a lot of new things um, like graffiti and uh, pubs as well. But the best part is you get to eat different cuisines, different restaurants. And I think that's that's the good part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, we have so many places to eat around campus. <laughs> um, we have, for example, two street markets, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Spitalfields market, market and yeah. Petticoat Lane Petticoat, Market, yeah. where you have a lot of street food, food vendors. Yeah. And you can get it like cheaper, cheaper. really, than in a restaurant yeah. and in, like, in a really cool atmosphere. Um, so there's a lot happening here, really. And um, speaking about the area, how is the commute uh, to here like from, from where you live, Varga? Well, for me, um, it takes 30 minutes mm -hmm. by tube and uh, probably an hour uh, by bus. But it's quite easy if you're living in uh, Zone 1 or Zone 2. I think it must be easy to yeah. commute. But uh, rather than that, um, I think I have no problems commuting to the mm -hmm. university. Yeah, so, um, so I, I live in a different county, so it takes about another 40 minutes to hour to get there. But it's an easy travel, really, just um, one train and then one tube to get here. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's really easy and accessible. So and it's only about a three minute walk from Liverpool Street Station to here. So it's really accessible this mm -hmm. morning. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so Liverpool Street, which is the, the closest um, st station to us, really, yeah. is like uh, one of the biggest um, commuting hubs yeah. in London. Yeah. So that means it connects <laughs> all the modes of transport that we have. So we have overground, underground, and buses. buses yeah. And all of these are, um, are going through Liverpool Street. Yeah. So really, no matter where you live in London, it will be very easy to get to yeah, here. To mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. A lot of lines. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and um, can you tell us maybe what you like to do in London and what are your favorite things about living in London? Naveen? Yeah. Uh, so every time I come here and then when we do finish our, uh, the, the day, we do go out often to uh, Shoreditch. Uh, that's where we normally go to. And then we kind of explore after we get... Um, not exactly bored but we just want to explore <laughs> more uh, so yeah we just, we just tend to explore with all our friends um it's it's really accessible from here so five minutes from here is a bit of field and then 10 minutes to shoreditch and just as margo said explore more cuisines mm -hmm. not just eat one food there's various different <laughs> foods out there uh there's various activities as well um you know there's the cinema isn't that far away from yeah. here as well so yeah it's a lot of activities a lot of fun around so it isn't just about studying all the time you can't go out <laughs> and have <laughs> a lot of big social life like mm -hmm. the city it does give you that as well i think for me um with my friends we we have been to two concerts so far mm. i think uh justin timberlake and imagine dragons mm. um, at the o2 and it's a beautiful arena really big and a lot of things to do there as well um, other than that, I think uh, me and my friends, we try and go to different markets and explore and see what is different, what's not, and uh, try to eat uh, <laughs> different <laughs> foods, uh, try different cuisines. Yeah. Uh, well, other than that, I think uh, in the summer right now, I think the weather is really beautiful and we've got, uh, we have uh, various parks like Hyde Park, 
regions. Yeah, yeah, regions. So, and uh, we go out for picnics during uh, lunch or in the evening. Yeah. Our international business management group uh, managed to have like a, a barbecue in oh. one of the hot parks <laughs> as well. So, you know, have, having a for about 40 people in one group is still is really nice where you can all come together, have a barbecue and yeah, you, can, you can't do that with 200 people. So, you know, <laughs> that's, so yeah, that's having that's a 40 true. people is still that advantage. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I think London has um, something to offer for everyone. Yeah, you know, if you're interested in sports, if you're interested in going out and yeah. concerts, um, being out and about like London is the place yeah. um, for example I really enjoy like Naveen mentioned parks in London London mm-hmm. is one of the greenest cities in the UK yeah. there are so many parks around mm-hmm. uh, although you know probably not many people know that haven't been to London you, you imagine that it's only like big buildings and skyscrapers <laughs> no, it's not no, like no, that no. at all there's so many green yeah. spaces around yeah. to enjoy the summer and it really does get quite hot here in the summer yeah. <laughs> just over this weekend we had 30 degrees, degrees yeah. 30 degrees of heat so really yeah, hot yeah. which you know some of you might think that England is just rain but yeah. in London it really does get quite <laughs> tropical yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's really nice on a sunny day sunny like this day. to just sit in a park relax with your friends mm-hmm. you know read a book have a picnic um, so yeah you can, you can do everything in London really and also do your dissertation <laughs> <laughs> yes in a Definitely. park <laughs> uh, for a nice environment yeah. um, great um, so now we can try to wrap the event up with yeah. some final questions for our students uh, so maybe Berg if you can tell me what are you enjoying or have you enjoyed the most about being a postgraduate student in London and at Newcastle University London um, I think uh, a huge part of it has to play uh, with being in the classroom mm-hmm. um, listen, attending every lecture and absorbing everything that a uh, lecture uh, can provide as well as uh, being with friends. And I think that's the most Mm -hmm. uh, beneficial part where you can get to learn uh, different cultures and languages as well, uh, which is really good. That's what I feel. Mm -hmm. What about you, Nina? Yeah, I think uh, I've enjoyed a lot of things throughout the year. I think networking masterclass is something that's been, um, that I've gained a lot from. I think at, after attending three master classes at the beginning of the year, I started attending every master class. I think um, you know even the littlest of um, businesses that you can benefit from, and um, obviously Spitalfield Markets as well. I think one of the <laughs> biggest highlight of yeah. uh, P, uh, postgraduate. Um, a lot of skills and a lot of knowledge that I've gained, and I feel more confident to be applying for jobs and applying and uh, going to interviews because of the skills I've gained at postgraduate. So. Yeah, I think postgraduate has uh, transformed me. Uh, you know, from undergraduate to postgraduate, it's a huge step, and you also uh, be a better uh, person as well. Great. Yeah. Could um, I also add that um, I think uh, the opportunity that university provides the student ambassadors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it it's really good. Mm. Um, you get to be creative, uh, open to ideas, yeah. present uh, uh, different topics. Mm. And I think that's been one of the best parts yeah. as well. I think oh, be, being a postgraduate, I think undergraduates do come to you and talk to you. It's as if they look at you as a role model. Oh, <laughs> I yeah, do, definitely. I do wish they do. But, you know, they do come and ask uh, for uh, advisors if they want to do postgraduate and if they need any help mm-hmm. in their business uh, course as well. So, yes, it's nice to have that responsibility being a postgraduate student as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And... Uh, Last question for me is, uh, what do you want to do after you graduate? So quite soon, really. Naveen, what are your ambitions for the future? Um, well, currently I'm, I'm applying for jobs, but I do still have the uh, goal of having a PhD uh, one day. And um, if I have to take that call two months from now after I graduate, if I still have the motivation to do PhD, uh, if not, I just have to keep applying for jobs, really. So. Mm-hmm. would have to wait and see so hopefully phd mm-hmm. or a job so yeah and Barbara? Yeah. well for me i would like to uh get onto the field uh get my hands dirty and work work <laughs> work so it it helps me um as an um w- let's let's say i'm putting everything from uh theoretical to uh practical and i think it would really help me understand everything that i've studied <laughs> Definitely. and it would be really nice so, yeah. okay great mm. 
Well, thank you very much. Thank, uh, you. thank you to our panel for um, answering all the questions. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to all the attendees. Um, I hope you found the event informative and useful. Uh, you can still ask us questions um, just by sending an email. Um, it's um, outreachlondon at ncl.ac.uk and we'll answer any questions that you have. If you're in London or around, you can also uh, come and visit us on campus. There is a form on the website that you'll need to fill in and then you know, we'll find somebody to show you around, uh, either me or one of my colleagues or, or one of the ambassadors. Yeah. Um, and you will have a chance, you know, to see um, what it's really like to be here yeah. uh, in this area. So please go ahead and do that if you, ha if you have the opportunity. Uh, also, I would like to invite you to um, our upcoming events in September. We'll have an event uh, for um, all the students that will be coming to study with us. So it will be arri about arriving in London, uh, getting you started, getting you set up um, and all the things that you have to think about and prepare before you arrive here. And um, also please have a look at our website and look for uh, future events as well as I particularly recommend the section of the website called Student Voices uh, where we yeah. have um, our amazing yeah. students writing blogs. Uh, there are their profiles. You can also uh, find um, a university buddy and ask them questions. So this is a great resource for all of you out there who want to hear from our current students to read about their experiences here. It's called Student Voices. So please do have a look on our website. And uh, that is all from, from us today. We hope you really enjoyed the event and we really yeah. hope to see you on campus next year. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you.